this next thing that I'm talking about needing to change if we want to be more consistent with not just our new year resolution, but any commitments that we have made to God is our mind. Dang it, why do I keep saying mind? Hey everyone, welcome back for a little TLC. So we are still in our series talking about how we can be more consistent with our new year resolution. We have talked about writing down the vision. We've talked about changing our mindset. We've talked about changing our location or our surroundings. And so today I want to talk about one other thing that we may need to change in order to stick with our new year resolutions or in general stick with our commitments to God and that is our cravings. Sometimes you may need to change your cravings. Let's get into it. So for the sake of talking about changing our cravings, I'm going to use as an example a story regarding the children of Israel coming out of Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. And it reads, and I believe this is the New International Version, um, the rabble with them began to crave other food. And again, the Israelites started wailing and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. And the story of the children of Israel is a very long and a <laughs> interesting one. Um, but the brass tacks of it is God had delivered the children of Israel from Egypt, a place where they had been in slavery for about 400 years. And then they had to wander through the wilderness because they weren't ready to inherit the promised land just yet. Um, so God led them through the wilderness. He provided for them while they were in the wilderness. Um, if they were thirsty, he got them something to drink. When they were hungry, he literally gave them manna from heaven. Um, and at this point, what we just read in Numbers chapter 4, excuse me, Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6, the children of Israel were complaining. God was protecting them. He was literally leading them as a pillar of fire and a pillar of a cloud um, at various times of the day. And they were complaining. <laughs> they complained about some of everything. So in the text that I just read, the Israelites were complaining about the food they had to eat. And they said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt at no cost. Also the cucumbers, melons, leeks, onions, and garlic. But now we have lost our appetite. We never see anything but this manna. So they were fed up with this manna that God was miraculously providing for them. And some people may not think that there's any problem with them complaining and thinking that they want to have some diversity in their food. But I just want to remind us all that they were saying that they had all this food back in Egypt, this great food in Egypt, and that they had it at no cost seeming to forget that when they had those things, they were literally enslaved, okay? That's a cost. So they were remembering back to this good food they had, but seemed to have just forgotten about the incredible cost, which was their freedom that they had to give up in order to get those particular things. And so all of us can have something that keeps us in bondage, something that we can crave, whether that be validation from others, whether that be adventure, it can be sex, it, it can be different types of food, but those things that we crave can be keeping us in bondage. And I don't want us to be like the children, children of Israel who got away from their point of bondage and then were looking back at the things that they had, the good things they had, seemingly good, with rose-colored glasses, forgetting that they had these good things, but they were in bondage while they had them. When we walk away from something, we can think that we're all good to go, but then if we get a whiff of a piece of pie that we know we like, or we get a whiff of that perfume that we know that we like, it can have us thinking like, were things really that bad when I had them? And the answer is yes, they really were that bad. Continue to walk in your freedom, but sometimes you may have to change your cravings. I did look up in the practical sense some ways that we can change our cravings because I think that it's something that many of us struggle with. Um, and so the internet tends to talk about not jumping into a restrictive diet, 
um, how a slow start is a good start. And that may be well and good, but I know for myself, if I start too slow, I won't ever get started. Or I was telling someone the other day that um, I'm like very disciplined if I don't have something. But if I try even a little bit of it, I might fall off the wagon and roll down the hill and it's hard for me to get back up. So I am the type of person who really does need a restrictive I like I have to starve out my cravings. Something that is unhealthy, I just have to starve it out because I don't necessarily have that much self control when it comes to just doing a little bit. Um, I have to just like throw things out altogether, <laughs> and that's just me knowing me. Um, there are some things that talk about you know retraining your palate and how that takes a couple of days. I've seen some quotes that talk about how it takes at least twenty one days for you to make something a habit. And so I like to recommend my very favorite retraining your palate type of technique, and that is fasting. Okay, fasting is an incredible discipline that teaches us how to have control over certain areas in our life. Um, I like to fast for at least 10 days, 10 day minimum. Um, and that's a good way for me to retrain my palate and at least show myself that you can you can go without something and you can go without this particular thing that you are craving. And it may be even more than 10 days. If you get to the end of 10 days of fasting from something and you still are craving it, starve it some more. There's a saying that says whatever you feed will grow. So starve out, <laughs> starve out those bad cravings. And it doesn't just have to be with food. That could be with an unhealthy amount of time on social media. That could be unhealthy interactions with a certain man or woman who are your weakness. Whatever it is, take some time away from it. Starve it, starve it, starve it. And while you are starving out those bad things, like I said, whatever you feed will grow. Feed yourself spiritually. Feed yourself those good things. Um, get around people who are going to pour into you. Get into your words. Spend lots of time with God. Pray. Meditate. Fill yourself up with those good things that are going to feed and grow your spirit, man, and not feed in to those cravings. Also, when it comes to fasting, I know there are some people who get like super holier than thou and are like, I'm going to fast for 40 days and 40 nights like Jesus did and... Don't do that. Like in this particular instance, I mean, I know I said I can't do the slow start thing when it comes to restricting my diet or my cravings, but I definitely recommend a slow start when it comes to fasting. So don't say that you're going to do a 40 day total fast um, and think that you're going to be successful. Or one time I thought that I was going to do a sugar fast during the holidays and your girl failed because that's just unrealistic to think that I'm going to complete a sugar fast when I'm having to cook cakes and pies for everybody else that's around me. So it's just set realistic expectations for yourself. Start off with a Daniel fast rather than a total fast right off the bat. Um, spend at least 15 minutes with God before you say you're going to be on your face before the father for three days in a row. You know, like set reasonable expectations for yourself but the important thing is for you to try your best with the help of God to change your cravings it can be done but first you have to acknowledge that some of your cravings are unhealthy then you have to starve out the bad cravings and you really starve them out by cutting them off and then filling yourself creating a new palette a desire for those things that are spiritual Spend your time spending time with God, being in your word, praying, and being around people who are going to help you grow into your best self. So in order to be more consistent with your new year resolutions, in order to be more consistent really in general with commitments that we make to others and to God, we may need to change our cravings. Don't allow time and space to make you forget that some of the things that you craved really did come at a cost. Feed your spirit man or woman. Spend time with God so that you can starve out those bad cravings and not have them leading you back into a place that had you in slavery. All right, let's change these cravings. My light just died, so that may be a way of telling me that I need to wrap this thing on up. 
I would love to know what you all think about this. What are some things that you crave that you think you need to let go? If you have some tips for cutting off some of these cravings or changing some of these cravings, I would love to read them or to hear them. Make sure you comment, like, and share, and hit the subscribe button so that you can get notifications of when I post my videos. Y'all have a wonderful week, and I'll see you next time for a little TLC. Bye-bye.